Hey guys, we are back updating the power rankings for Big Brother 26 towards the end of week nine. And this is definitely a week of the show that exists. And there's some stuff to talk about, though I can't say it's all positive, but we'll get to that soon enough. Now I'm recording this on Tuesday, September 17th. And if you're new to the channel or if you only follow the show through the episodes, I will be heavily discussing the events of the live feeds and spoiling the veto results. So if you don't want to be spoiled, now's your chance to kick out the video. But with all that out of the way, we have nine players to talk about and it's wasting more time. Let's get right into the video. So starting off at number nine, we have the latest boot from the season. And here we have Quinn. And this was largely to be expected here where Quinn was a pretty clear target by the end of the week. And while I did allude to the possibility of the vote flipping, I feel like that campaign died pretty quickly where there really wasn't much of a push to flip the votes. And Quinn himself even seemed to have given up by the end of it even though the likes of Leah and Angela were blindsided by the actual vote count here. And even though I feel like Quinn largely brought it upon himself, and even though I feel like he played pretty poorly, I do feel bad for him with how this run went, where he was one of the bigger super fans coming into the season. He's someone that you could clearly tell wanted to play the game, and you can definitely see that with how he tried to play the middle and how he just doled out information left and right. Though at the same time, a lot of it backfired as well, where you have him having not one, but two HOHs going completely sideways for him and him being blindsided both times is pretty bad there. You also have him clearly wanting to work with Leah and him not fully realizing that Leah never really liked him. And even Joseph, someone he was working with as well, didn't really like him either. And to top it all off, he doesn't even get to meet Julie when he's voted out, where he happens to have been evicted on the one week in Big Brother history that Julie was out sick. So... I really do feel bad for Quinn where he was his big super fan, someone who I did like coming into it. And even now I feel bad for him in many ways. And the fact that things just went so wrong for him over the course of his run is something I can definitely feel for. But I do think he still brought it upon himself. I still feel like he played pretty sloppily for a lot of it. And he's now out of the game, which is a big reason why he's here at number nine. And with that, there are eight players left in the game to talk about. And as usual, I'll be ranking them based on how likely I think they are to win the game based off their current game position. But number eight, the person I believe is the least likely to win from this point on is probably the person going home on Thursday night, though that's not fully guaranteed yet. But we do have Rubina. And Rubina has pretty much stopped playing the game for herself, where this week just really cemented the fact that the likes of Rubina and T-Core are viewing themselves as being better than everyone else, how they want to prove that good people can win this game, which is honestly pretty frustrating to watch. I feel like it's very annoying when people claim that they're the good people while people that try to play the game more strategically are somehow bad, as I feel like they're just on a massive high horse here. But I think with Rubina in particular, it goes even beyond that, where at this point, despite her being on the block against T-Core, she would rather just lay down her game and go home over T-Core, which is pretty ridiculous in my eyes. And I feel like I can't really reward that gameplay. I feel like Rubina is someone who has stopped playing the game for herself. She doesn't even try to have the veto used on her, where at the point where Angel decides to use the veto on Chemo, that's pretty much it. And Rubina herself has more afraid of T-Core potentially going home and potentially going up than her own safety in the game. And I feel like at this point, even if she were to get deeper into the game, I just can't really see her garnering that much respect. Now, granted, if she's able to get to the final two against anyone other than Kim or T-Core, then she'll at least have those votes on the jury. I feel like that's something you can at least give her. But I feel like the fact that she has done pretty much nothing to try to stay and the fact that she is pretty happy to go home to allow T-Core to potentially get further in the game. And at the same time, you have Leah seeing her as a target over T-Core, where Leah herself said that she put up T-Core as the pawn due to Leah thinking that T-Core would not have the numbers to go home. I feel like all that's pretty bad. Now, there is technically a way that Rubina can stay in the game here, where there's definitely votes there to take out T-Core with them currently on the block at this point, where you have both Angela and MJ being on board to take out T-Core, meaning they just need one more vote to do so. And considering that Cam is someone who has entertained the idea of going against Chelsea here, I think there's definitely a way that Cam can flip to vote with MJ and Angela here. It's just a question of whether he'll actually do so. And again, it's not a guarantee, but I guess with there technically being a way that Rubina could say over T-Core, there is a world where she obviously lives to see another week, but I feel like with the way that she has just kind of laid down her game, I do have to leave her here at number eight. Now moving on to number seven, and we have the other person currently on the block, but we do have T-Core. Now I did consider putting T-Core a little bit higher if I'm being honest, 
considering Leah did put her up as the pawn due to her thinking that Tigor would have the numbers to stay. And to be fair, even now, I still think she probably will have the numbers to stay depending on what Cam does. But she is still technically in danger where obviously there are only five votes and with her having two votes against her at this moment, I feel like the fact that she is relatively close to being voted out if a certain person decides to flip is not particularly great where you obviously have Cam who could potentially vote to side with MJ here. Even Chelsea is someone who has shown a willingness to vote on t -Core here. So there's definitely pathways for t -Core to go home this week, which is a big reason why she's this low. And on top of that, you have her not really trying to fight to keep herself off the block, where despite her being clearly one of the options there, she doesn't really talk to Leah at all. She just kind of disregards her. And I feel like had she been able to talk with Leah more, she definitely could have dissuaded Leah from putting her up to begin with. So I definitely had to knock her to that end as well. So I think there's definitely things to knock with Tigor here. The fact that she hasn't really played that well over the course of this week, and not to mention the fact that she still could technically go home here. All that is pretty bad and a big reason why she's just low on the list. Though if she's able to survive to next week, I definitely think there's definitely a pathway for her to win the game, obviously. She has been one of the better position people in the house. And she's even at the point now where Rabina doesn't even want to stay in the game because of how close she is to t -Core. So I think those are all things to praise here. And was enough to leave her here at number seven. Now moving on to number six. And we have another person who I'm not feeling that great about to win the game at this point. But we do have Kimo. And I feel like Kimo's kind of in a similar boat to Rabina here. Where the fact that he was once again put up on the block is pretty mind-blowing here. And he was the initial target where had the knob say the same, he probably would go home here. And even Leah, the person who had put him up, wanted the noms to stay the same even after the veto, which is pretty crazy there. Though to be fair, he also does good enough work in talking to Leah and really like pitching himself to wanting to work with her. So I guess that's something at least. But I feel like at the end of the day, a big reason why he's staying in the game is due to Angela putting her foot down and deciding she is going to use her veto to save Kimo here, which again, I feel like I would have to give more credit to Angela for that. But I feel like Kimo is someone who I still see as way too passive and I feel like he's still way too loyal to that trio of t -Core and Rabina here where that entire trio has gotten pretty pious in my view where a lot of them are just talking about how they're the good people and how they deserve to win and while that could end up working out for Kimo if he gets to the final two where he'll definitely have people rooting for him on the jury I also think it makes it less likely that he'll take the shots needed to get to the end without the likes of T-Core right? I feel like if Kimo were to have his way he would just get to the final two with T-Core and lose to her in a jury vote so I feel like all oh, that's pretty bad so I think his continued association with the trio is a bit of a double-edged sword where on one hand it does give him some one equity if he gets to a final two against anyone other than the likes of t -Core. but at the same time it also makes it harder for him to get into a winning spot to begin with because of how loyal he is to t -Core. so I think all that's pretty bad but at the end of the day he still had the veto used on him he is still pretty safe at this point and I feel like there are definitely going to be bigger priorities in the future over Kimo which is enough to have him here at number six now moving on to number five, and this person has technically gone up compared to last week. And while I'm still not overly high on this person, I do feel like their game on the whole wasn't that positive compared to last week, but we do have Angela. And Angela obviously got blindsided by the last vote where she lost Quinn, didn't want that to happen. But I feel like beyond that, her play this week has actually been kind of good where she does manage to win the veto after Leah had won the HOH, which is all pretty good. And she even goes so far as to use the veto on Kimo, which opens it up for Leah to put up one of the bigger targets in the likes of Chelsea and T-Core. And I think that's definitely something you can give Angela credit for, where it very much feels like that Angela was more willing to take a shot this week compared to Leah, which we'll be talking about Leah in a moment. But I feel like that's at least something that Angela can point out if she gets to the end, where I feel like before the whole argument was that Angela was just going to be dragged to the end as this go and have no case for herself at all. But I do think with her winning a veto, her third competition win of the season, and her later using that veto to potentially take out a big player in T-Core, I feel like those are things that if Angela were to get to the final two, she could definitely point out that she technically made some moves within the game. Now, at the end of the day, is she that big of a jury threat? Not exactly, but I feel like she did at least improve her prospects moving forward compared to last week. I feel like she's at least doing more within the game which is enough to move her up slightly here 
even though I still don't feel like she's that, that likely to win, but it's enough to have her here at number five. Now moving on to number four, and we have someone who I just mentioned, but we do have Leah, and what a disappointment this HOH has been, where she was someone that was not only on the bottom the previous week and someone who had just been blindsided by losing Quinn, but is also someone who outwardly said on the feeds that she was going to put up Chelsea and T-Core if she had won HOH, which would have really shook up the game in her favor, and also made myself and a lot of other people pretty excited on Friday when we found out that she had won HOH and had this opportunity right in front of her, except she essentially talks herself out of this move where she ends up getting scared that the veto is going to be used and that the two sides are going to be mad at her if she went along and did this. So instead, we see her putting up Kimo and Rabina, which are pretty weak nominations, all things considered, considering neither of them are particularly big threats. And she's also deciding to go all in on targeting just one of the two trios, which in itself is a pretty misguided play as, yes, on one hand, you are technically doing one of the trios a favor by leaving them off the block entirely and assuring them that you're with them. But on the other hand, you're also giving that trio all the power over how the vote actually plays out, where instead of the other side coming to you to campaign and make deals to keep you around, you're instead empowering the other trio to go to the nominees and make deals with them and make it so that once the vote is done and they're playing the next HOH, now the nominee that stays is going to be inclined to work with that trio that you had just empowered. And that trio who you had done a favor to by not putting them up are going to be more inclined to work with the person that they just saved. So really, you're just doing yourself a massive disservice whereby trying to do this half measure, you're getting the worst of both worlds. So I feel like Leah's approach here is all wrong. And the fact that she had put up two of the weaker people within the trio that she's targeting is also pretty bad. But despite this, she gets another chance to do the right thing and putting up Chelsea and T-Core where both her and Angela win vetoes here. And despite that, she doesn't even want to use her own veto, where instead Angela uses the veto, which allows Leah to put up T-Core, which I guess is better than nothing, but Leah doesn't even consider T-Core the target, where she's expecting Rubina to go home against T-Core. And yes, while there's still a chance that the vote could flip to take out T-Core, I feel like a lot of it's happening in spite of what Leah has been doing this week. And in general, I feel like this week has been a massive wasted opportunity for Leah, where she had this opportunity right in front of her to really shake up the game and put herself in the middle. And I think the more frustrating part is that she herself was planning to make this big move, only to get scared once she actually had the opportunity to do so. So I just find myself very frustrated with how Leah has approached this week. And while it still could technically work out for her, I feel like at this point she is kind of drawing dead with the trio where none of them are really likely to vote for her at this point as she gets towards the end. And even moving forward, I still feel like she's not going to be in the best spot where I feel like she is handing a lot of power to the Cam, MJ, and Chelsea trio at this point. And I feel like with them being in a better spot to dominate the game moving forward compared to Leah, I do have to leave Leah behind here a good amount. But I do think she still has more of a shot compared to the people we already talked about, where I feel like she at least has more of a desire to win the game, I guess, even though that's not really saying much, which is why she's here at number four. Now moving on to number three, and I do feel like there's a pretty big gap between these top three and Leah and the rest of the list here, as I think these three are definitely coming to this next round in a pretty interesting spot, and while they could definitely ruin it for themselves, I do feel like these three are definitely ahead of the rest of the group, and it's just a matter of ordering them, but at number three, we probably have the person who I think is the most likely to be targeted before the end, but number three, we do have Mackenzie, and I think Mackenzie is in a somewhat interesting spot at this point where she does seem to be one of the bigger people advocating for taking out T-Core this week, which I do think would be pretty beneficial for MJ in particular here, where it does seem like the likes of Chelsea and Cam benefit more from T-Core staying in the game, whereas T-Core has the weakest relationship with MJ out of that trio. So the fact that MJ recognizes this and is trying to take out a big player is all pretty good in my eyes. Though I think the problem though is that it could also make her a pretty big target in the future where we have been seeing in this past week that there is this growing tension between Chelsea and MJ here with a lot of it stemming from Chelsea being jealous of MJ for cuddling with Cam in a spot where Chelsea clearly had a crush on Cam. 
And I could see a world where Chelsea does allow MJ to run away from the trio, where MJ is able to flip the game on its head, take out Tikor here, and obviously that would put Cam and Chelsea in a worse spot. Though at the same time, I still find it difficult how Mackenzie gets towards the end as she still doesn't really have a very solid final two. And I could also see her just being seen as this pretty big threat to be taken out before the end. So I think those things are a big reason why she isn't higher in the list, even though you can claim that she is doing what's in her best interest here by wanting to take out T-Core here. And I think the other thing is that it's not even a guarantee that she'll get her way in losing T-Core here, considering that a lot of it does come down to what Cam and Chelsea want. Or while there's definitely a possibility they could flip to take out T-Core, it's not a guarantee. And I feel like that's another thing that could get MJ in trouble is if T-Core does stay and MJ does get blamed for wanting to flip the game on T-Core, that could make a bigger target on her as well. So I think those things and worry spots are a big reason why she isn't higher, even though I feel like there's definitely a world where she could make it work out for her. And I think she would have a very solid case if it gets towards the end. But I feel like for now, considering the uncertainty of the actual vote, I do have to leave her behind at number three. Now moving on to number two, and it is kind of crazy that these two are the top two, considering there's definitely a world where they could be in a worse spot moving forward. And I think there's definitely a debate for this person being number one, as I feel like this person's probably safer in the game right now compared to the number one person, but I still went with this person number two, and that is Cam. And I think you could definitely have to give Cam some credit here, where he essentially is able to give himself safety this week by making a deal with Leah, where Leah agrees to not put up Cam in a spot to where Leah had been talking about wanting to target the trios. And considering that there was this talk about potentially backdooring Chelsea by putting up someone from her side of things, the fact that Cam is taken off the table completely is pretty good in my eyes. And I feel like Cam and Leah do have this pretty good relationship at this point that could definitely give Cam more options in the game moving forward. Even beyond that, I feel like Cam is the swing vote for this week, where it really is his decision over whether or not to send out T-Core or Rabina. Now, admittedly, I think Cam should be voting out Rabina here. I do think T-Core saying the game is better for Cam moving forward, considering T-Core does have a good relationship with both Cam and Chelsea here. And I think even beyond that, I think Cam was also someone who is kind of unintentionally causing division within his own trio, where obviously MJ and Chelsea kind of have this feud going on with Cam cuddling with MJ and stuff. So I think there's definitely a world where Cam's game could still blow up, which could obviously open things up a bit more. But I think considering the fact that Cam made himself pretty safe this week through his good work with Leah, as well as the fact that he is technically the swing vote coming into this round, and is also someone who is less likely to be a threat down the road compared to MJ, I think those things are enough to where I put Cam above MJ for me. And I could definitely see a case for him being number one, considering the way that he's played this week. But I think with Chelsea still being in the better spot, I do have him here at number two. And now at number one, the person I believe is the most likely to win Big Brother 26 at this point is still Chelsea. And it's kind of crazy how this week ended up working out for Chelsea, even though it should have been pretty bad for her, where Leah actively said last week that she was going to put up Chelsea and T-Core with Chelsea as a target there. And that was obviously a big worry sign for me last week that Chelsea could have been in danger here, especially after Leah won the HOH. But I feel like Chelsea was able to do just enough to really ease Leah away from targeting Chelsea here. Now, granted, there was still talk about Chelsea being the back door after the veto, though it always felt like Leah was more inclined to put up T-Core over the likes of Chelsea anyway. So I do have to give Chelsea some credit here for escaping the block when che Leah was very much inclined to put her up here. So again, I do have to give her some credit for that. And I still think, sort of similar to Cam, she definitely has plenty of agency over how this week goes where she could choose to either take out Rubina or Tikor here. And I feel like Cam and Chelsea are pretty likely to work together on this vote. Though at the same time, I think you can also blame Chelsea as well for potentially causing division within that trio where Chelsea is really the one hammering in the fact that Cam and MJ have been hanging out where Chelsea is clearly the person more upset about that situation than the others are. And I do think that if the Cam, Chelsea, and MJ trio fails that a lot of it will come down to what Chelsea does. And even now you can claim that Chelsea is harming her group's chances of winning out on this vote where it's her that's causing Mackenzie to consider voting out T-Core here when MJ should be in lockstep with Cam and Chelsea. So 
Obviously, that's a knock here. And I think if Tikor goes, it would be pretty bad for Chelsea's game in particular. So there is definitely a debate over whether to have Cam or Chelsea here at number one. But I think it largely comes down to me still having more faith in Chelsea as a player overall, that she still has time to correct a lot of what's been happening this week with MJ drifting from her group. And I think beyond that, if Tikor is able to stay in the game, if the likes of Cam and MJ are able to come around to voting to keep T-Core. I do think that still benefits Chelsea more than Cam, where I think Cam is still more likely to be a target down the road compared to Chelsea. And I feel like with T-Core and the rest of the trio being on Chelsea's side, I think that definitely says that Chelsea will have to potentially win the game. So I still have the same views of Chelsea as I have before, but I feel like with her still having that upside moving forward, I'm going to leave her here at number one. And there we go. That will do it for this week's video. If you like this content, be sure to like and subscribe. It really helps with the channel. Now I'll be back again next week. I'll update the Power and Kings again. So you can look forward to that. I am now covering Survivor 47. And very soon I'll be covering Hell's Kitchen. So you can look forward to that. I'm on Patreon and have a YouTube membership. So if you want to consider supporting the channel, you can do so by clicking the link in the description. And you can also join the Discord server by also clicking the link in the description. There's a lot of stuff coming your way. But for now, that is a video. See ya.